Hello everyone and this is a look at the new pyro solver in Houdini 19. So this there isn't a new pyro solver it's just the the interface has been updated. So if you're following any of the older uh, pyro videos from Houdini 18 or whatever then uh, if you're trying to follow them in Houdini 19 it still functions the same it's just, you know, the user interface has been updated and things have been moved around. So it might be slightly confusing. So this is just, it's a very basic video on just, uh, you know, what's new or where things are, you know, now in, in the new version. Okay, so to get started, I'll just, I'll create something very simple. Actually, I'll just copy it from here. So what I have is I just have a sphere and I gave it a mountain sop and a pyro source. Okay, so I'll just take the sphere and the mountain sop. Okay, so I'll just do control C to create a geometry and control V. So we have this, which is just this slight animated thingy. Uh, it's too fast, so let's do one thing. I'm going to slow it down. Yeah, okay. And then I can just take a pyro source all of this stuff is the same like there's nothing that's changed over there and we will set it to uh, surface scatter so I should get this and I'll make it 0 0.05 and I'll set this to source burn okay so we have like those two then we can rasterize it so I'll say volume rasterize attributes and we'll pick up burn and temperature Okay, so we have this and then I can just pick up a solver. So we'll just pick up a pyro solver. Right, so that's that's pretty much it. So there's nothing, you know, different over there. So there are a whole bunch of things that have changed because like I don't remember what the old one looked like, but this is not what it looked like. Like everything is completely different now. Okay, so the first thing is uh, there is a new tab called fields. Okay, and the dissipation which used to be in the shaping uh, tab is now in the fields tab. So that is the first thing that you that I ended up noticing. Okay, so let me just press play and it should be, you know, fine. The other thing that you also might want to do is let me just, I'll just connect the voxel size to everything. I'll do copy parameter and just do paste relative reference and I'll make the voxel size to 0 0.04. Yeah, okay. Okay, so um, the first thing is that you have a tab called bounds where you can define the bounds. Okay, and you can also define like boundary conditions. So let's say we want to block it, uh, you know, in the Y axis like below. So we'll just, we'll get that. Okay, the second thing would be you have a sourcing tab, which is where all the fields or the, the volumes you've generated get, uh, get picked up so this used to be in the end now it's here so you you get like it's picking up uh, density temperature burn becomes flame and velocity okay so it's picking up the basic stuff that you want there's also a new node called a uh, new area called limit source range so what that does is if you only want to pick up a certain frame range of your if let's say if an animated geometry you only, only want to pick up a certain frame range you can do that here. Like you no longer need to animate uh, the activation or something, right? So you can actually do this here. So now it will only play for 10, 12 frames and then disappear, see. So that is, you know, that's a nice thing to have. Okay, or if you do static frame, then it'll just pick up the first frame, like that's it, okay. Uh, okay, then uh, coming to fields. So you have dissipation. This is, it's it functions the same. So if you've seen any of my sort of uh, you know intro to smoke series or the pyro series there's nothing different it's just you know like the ui looks slightly different so firstly you have dissipation for smoke uh, we also want this to emit smoke so what you need to do is you need to turn on emit density from flame earlier it used to be called emit smoke from flame now it says emit density from flame i i have no idea why they changed that okay uh the flame lifespan which used to be up here on top is now down there i'll make it like 0 0.4 so if you press play, you get, uh, let's make it like really short. Let's make it 0.2. Yeah, so you have like a little bit of smoke coming out. And if you want like a lot of smoke, we'll get this up to about 500. So that will get you like a lot of smoke. 
see there you go okay okay let me just lower this uh, lower the frame range to about 90 frames okay and then i can increase the dissipation so you'll get like a fairly standard looking smoke like fire and smoke okay then we get uh, like in the shaping area you get a you get like buoyancy used to be like somewhere here in the beginning now it's in the shaping area uh, we lower that a little bit so the flame doesn't rise as much okay then we can you can also add wind now so there's like an option for wind you know like if i increase that so you get some wind I think a little bit of it has been picked up from the Axiom solver. So I think a lot of people are using Axiom nowadays, which is pretty good. But uh, yeah, so you have like, you know, you have wind, the rest of it is the same. You have disturbance, we can add some turbulence. So these things are, you know, more or less the same that used to be. Uh, we can add flame expansion. So let's make it around three. So that will sort of expand the flame. Like if you really want to see what it's doing, like let's take it up to 10. That'll, that'll sort of give you an idea. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to expand it that much. But it's good when you're doing explosions and stuff. I've covered this stuff. You know, like, there's nothing new here. Okay. Uh, the look tab is just the look tab, right? Like, you can sort of define the density of your smoke and uh, you can define shadow density. This is something new, which it is doing now, is, uh, like, previously you had to add a light in order to get uh, shadows on your smoke. Now... There's like an inbuilt ambient occlusion uh, shader in the viewport for the smoke. So you automatically get, you know, like it doesn't look flat anymore. So even if it's very light, you'll still see like shadowing in there. So which makes it pretty cool. Okay. Like previously it used to look like this, but now you can have like this ambient shadow, which makes it look a lot better. Okay, you have like your flame intensity. Uh, let's just change these colors for fun. So I'll make it... Like even the shadow color, I'll make it slightly bluish or something. Okay, another thing if you notice, like when I zoom in, you can see the voxels, but when I leave the mouse, you'll see it sort of blurs out. So this, they've added like a filtering in the viewport. So which makes it look softer, it makes it look better. Because earlier everything used to look blocky. Okay, like if you had to increase the voxel count a lot in order to get like smooth looking smoke. You still need to do that, but for the viewport, uh, like if you're if you're just simming like a low res uh, simulation, then it gives you a better result because it just it's got like a filtering option inbuilt in there. Okay, uh, then let's talk about uh, yeah I haven't gone through the advanced tab, so I have no idea. Okay, you have like your export options, so all of that stuff remains the same. Uh, the one uh, new thing that is there, or actually not new, uh, let's set up a collision and then I'll talk about it. So I'll just take uh, let's take a test rubber toy and we'll take a collision source let's put a transform in the middle and i'll put it up here and then i can just take the vdb output and drop it in there and so if you press play i should get yeah you're getting a collision let's make it bigger yeah there you go okay so this is fine now, uh, the one change that is there is, let's say if we animate this. Okay, so I'll come in here to this guy and we'll animate it. So I'll just, I'll do like an alt click. I'll set this to auto key and I'll move it here and come to 36 and I'll move it till about there. Okay. Now, if you press play, uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, so this is fine. Okay. But you have again, like you have options in here. Wherein, like, you know, you can limit the collision range as well. So if you just if you keep it to static frame, then it won't pick up the animation at all because it's only picking up like, you know, frame one. So you won't see any collision happening now. And if you don't want it to calculate for like the whole thing, we can have it like do a frame range. Okay, of let's say zero to 40 or 50. So you have options like, like this is an interesting option that is available now. Yeah, see, so post frame 50, it stops colliding with this. See, now the smoke is just going through it. 
So you can do stuff like that. I mean, it can it can be useful in some places. Okay, now as a final thing, like I did uh, the previous video I did where we, where I was talking about the new uh, adjust nodes. So you have a couple of new noise nodes as well. So I showed like the noise fog. So now what you can do is you can use those here. Okay, so previously what we had to do was like after the pyro source, then you add like a attribute adjust float or a noise and then you rasterize that into a volume. But now you can do it afterwards as well. So if I just come in here and I pick up a, a volume noise fog and I can set this to burn and then I'll take a second one to control C control V and I'll set this to temperature. Okay, so what, what we're going to do now is we are basically adding noise to the volume directly. Okay, so I can set this to multiply and I'll say enable remap. Let's see it with the pyro solver. So it will be easier here. And then I can just see, I can actually like, you know, so you can do this, you know, like after the volume brass tray. So rather than doing it before at point level, you can now do it at volume level, you know, using these nodes. And then I can just select these two and I'll give it some animation. So now you get a slightly, you know, better or different result. Now, again, this is not picking up the animation. Okay. So the reason it's not picking up the animation is because in the sourcing, it's got limit source range on and it's picking up a static frame. So if you just turn it off, then it'll pick up, you know, the entire animation. So, so yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it, you know, so it's nothing like very complicated. It just, there are a couple of new options, like the limit options that are there and just some things have sort of, you know, like they've changed places. And what I realized was in the fields, uh, I had to keep the emission scale. Like if you want smoke to be emitted from a flame, uh, you need to keep the emission scale pretty high. Like earlier it used to happen with just like 50, 60. I realized like now I have to go all the way up to about like 500 to get the same result. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, like uh, everything else is more or less the same. The only thing I can't seem to find is there used to be that reference temperature option here, which if it was like lesser then it used to go downwards. And give me a second, I'm going to try and find it. Okay, solving, sparse solver. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, let me try something. Let me take the buoyancy into negative. Let's make it minus one. Uh, let's see if that works. We're going to turn off. We'll keep it open. Let me just see what happens. Yeah, okay. You can do this. You can just have it go downwards. Yeah, you also have this one final option here, which is you can have like these shape guides. So if you want to see certain things, like let's say if I want to see turbulence, then you can see the turbulence. See, it'll show you what that looks like. And even within the fields, you have options for guides. So if you want to see temperature, see, so you can see temperature. Let me just make the background darker. So there are, there are like new visualization options that you can, you know, kind of use. Yeah, so you can, so you have like some nice options in here now. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Like uh, the result is going to be the same. It's just, you know, this will help you adapt it to the latest version.